I have been desperate to show you this blouse. Oh my gosh, I absolutely love it. And I hope you enjoyed me trying to skate. Let's get going. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Judy and you are watching Running So and So. Before I start with the excitement of today's vlog, I want to say a massive, massive thank you to the lovely Jan for the gorgeous gift of the coffee. Jan, that blew me away. Thank you so much and thank you for your lovely comments too. And thank you everybody for your lovely comments and to the new subscribers who have joined me since my Friday shows, which went out on Friday. I'm still in shock over that, folks. Anyhow, let's get on with today's vlog. This is the vlog I have been desperate to share with you. I am introducing to you today, at approximately the same time as this pattern is launched, the new pattern by Soho 7, and it is called the Regalia Blouse. Wow, so having the chance to test a brand new pattern. Whoa. I love it. I love seeing the process of the new pattern coming to the market in its raw state. And my blue blouse was from pattern testing round one. And I enjoyed doing it so much. I said to Peggy, please, please, can I test round two so that I can see how you have altered the blouse from pattern test one to pattern test two. And I do know that there's a couple of little tiny alterations on um, the size range that I have done. As of yet, I'm not quite certain what they are because they haven't come to me. So what have I tested? This is it. It is the regalia blouse. And the regalia blouse is a yoked blouse with gathers at the back and gathers at the front underneath the yoke and the gathers sit in the center. And it's really good to show you there on this one. Can you see how they sit there in the center? You have the option of doing a long sleeve version, which is the version I'm wearing. I'll just put a picture of me um, twirling around in this version. And this was very kindly taken for me this morning by Rachel after we'd done a bit of a dog walk. And then this short sleeve version, and it's up to you, you can mix and match. You can have the short sleeve version, the long sleeve version. And one of them is, one of the versions is slightly shorter than the other. So what I did when I got mine is I like a longer blouse. So both of mine are longer as this one is. Let me just rock the camera forward. Can you see there? I have a longer one. So there's the waist on this one. And I have taken the blouse slightly longer. I shall stand up so you, oh, you might not be able to see. But can you see there? I have got the blouse slightly longer. And you have the option of adding on this beautiful tie at the waist, should you wish. And I know when Rachel was taking the pictures this morning, she was saying, I said, oh, I like the belt. And she said, oh, I'm not so certain about the belt. So I've got one with the belt and one without the belt. But I will tell you why. With this one, I have used the utterly adorable um, cotton double gauze gingham from Atelier Brunette. Now, this was a stash fabric. I had bought a metre and a half of this. I cannot remember what it was that I bought it for, but it has made this blouse up beautifully. It is so soft, and I know that the sleeves are slightly tight on me, but that is an adjustment I have to make to all patterns. My sleeve and upper arm shape is genetically a pew thing, because, oh, no, it's not, it's a Lindsay thing, because my mum was a Lindsay. So I think next time when I do the blouse, because of my arm issues, I'm going to take this sleeve and I'm going to lengthen it and taper it in. It isn't a leg of mutton sleeve. A leg of mutton sleeve would be a balloon sleeve like this that comes in at this point on the arm, just below the elbow, and then you've got a really long, deep cuff, so it looks like tight and large. They aren't in vogue at the moment, at least I don't think they are. So let's get back to this beautiful pattern. So I have the pattern here, and this is hot off the press. This is the PDF pattern, and I'm recording this on Sunday the 19th, and I have a copy of the PDF pattern. So here we have, it is the regalia blouse, and it is standard double zero to 20. They also do curvy sizes 16 to 34. So let's go through the instructions here. So we have the line drawing on the front page. 
and I'm sure that when you have the paper copy, if you buy a paper copy in an envelope, you'll have one of the beautiful pictures like this one. And this is Peggy modelling the blouse. So the first page you've got your line drawings and it, it outlines the full features of the blouse. And the full features are a stand-up collar, front and back yokes, a lovely keyhole opening in the back. So let me show you the keyhole opening on this particular version. Now you can do it so it is like the one on this one, but I altered it when I did it on this one and I had a slightly wider opening. I squared it off here just to see what it would look like and it, it's worked out beautifully there. So the regalia blouse comes in two different size ranges. It comes in your standard sizes, which are American sizes double zero to 20. And then you have the curvy range, which is sizes 16 to 34. And I'm going to tell you what the actual finished measurements are. So let me start with the standard size. So let me start with the standard size. So we start with double zero. I'm just going to go with a bust to start with. So the bust starts at 31 inches or 79 centimetres, going up to size 20, 47 inches or 119 centimetres. She says getting the phone out which has died. Or with the curvy sizes, it starts size 16 which is 43 inches or 111 centimetres all the way through to 65 and a half inches or 156 centimetres. And your hips, oh, those are the actual measurements. So let's have a look at the finish measurements. So your finish measurements are in size double zero, across the, the bust and the ease there, 47 inches or 120 centimetres, straight the way through to um, 65 inches or 166 centimetres. And the finish measurements for the bust are 64 inches or 162 centimetres all the way through to 82 centimetres inches or 208 inches. Similarly on the bottom for the bust for the hips you start with a double zero at a 34 inch hip which is 86 centimetres with a finished oh it doesn't a bottom bottom opening finished size 47 inches and 120 centimetres, si up to size 20, with a hip of 50 inches or 127 centimetres, and a finish size of 65 inches or 166 centimetres. And, and my phone's gone off again, how dare it do that to me when I'm using it? The hip for a size 16 in the curvy would be 47 inches or 119 centimetres through to a size 34, 65 inches or 165 centimetres and the finishes are 160, sorry, the finished um, hip at size 16 would be 64 inches or 162 centimetres all the way through to 82 inches or 100, 208 centimetres at size 34. So what are the best features for me? Well, let's start. So, what fabrics are recommended for this blouse? The fabrics that are recommended, it is for primarily a woven fabric, and you're looking for those lighter weight woven fabrics, your voils, your cotton gauzes, your cotton lawns, your lightweight cotton poplins, your shirtings, um, like a lovely Swiss dobby dot, they call it a Swiss dot, or we would call it a dobby, you could use a lightweight linen, you could use a viscose. I have got some lovely... Um, Dobby Viscose in my stash which I've got from um, Atelier Brunette and I've also got some of their lovely twilled viscose which is slightly more substantial and I think that would make the most beautiful versions of the blouse. So fabric requirements, let's start for the sizes double zero to 20, 112 centimetres wide. You're going to need somewhere between just under two and a half yards to just over two and a half yards and somewhere between 2.3 or 2.4 meters depending on your size range between that so if you're going that was the bottom in that zero, zero, zero to six there's the 18 to 20 you're going to need 
three and a half yards to 3.3 uh, meters all the way through to, to yeah to about the same and then if you had 150 centimeters wide fabric you're going to go from maybe just under two yards 1.7 meters all the way through to two and a half meters or two and three quarter yards that's a very broad look at the, the amount of fabric you're going to need you're going to have to forgive me if I'm erring in this because I've never done a pattern review before and I just want to get it right. If you're making the curvy version of this blouse, you're going to need between three and a quarter yards if you are using a 45 centimetre wide fabric. So that's three and, th three and a quarter or three metres. Um, two, if you're doing up to the size 34, you're going to need four and one eighth of a yard or you're going to need 3.8 metres. If you're using 150 wide fabric, it's two and a half yards or 2.3 meters, um, up to a maximum of three yards or 2.8 meters. Now that is just a very, very loose guide as to how much fabric you will need. Now, the lovely thing about this lovely double gauze is that this is reversible. So on, it, it doesn't matter what's on one side is on the other. So let me just stand up and show you. If you've not seen this gauze from Atelier Brunette, on one side you've got little checks and on the other side you've got big checks. So for me, flipping around with all the colours, it was easy and I kept it nice and simple. But it would be a great one to colour block, wouldn't it? You could have different colour upon your collar and you could have, just like I've done here, I think, yes, I've got big, big checks across the top and down the sleeves and little checks here and around the bodice. Now, this pattern is designed and aimed at the intermediate sewer or sewist. I would strongly agree with that because it does include a double burrito and you are burritoing the front yoke, bit of the yoke, and then separately you are doing the back bit of the burrito. So you're doing one, turning it through, and then you're doing the other and then turning it through. You can't do them together. Believe me, I tried it on that one to see if I could cut the corners. It just will not work. But by the time you've done it, you'll be an expert at the burrito. The other tricky item on this is the keyhole opening at the back. But Peggy's instructions are absolutely fantastic. So you are going to need interfacing for your opening and you're going to need interfacing for your collar. Now, as you all know, I'm not a great lover of interfacing. This was a pattern test. I did it. The one thing I didn't do, sorry, Peggy, was to stay stitch. I don't stay stitch. Um, I think I've spent so long in my life taking out stay stitching. I don't think I ever want to do it again in my life. I didn't use stay tape either. But, so you can see here, going back to the opening, that Peggy's instructions are extremely clear as to how to open that through and to pull it through. But the reason that there are pages between it is that you catch the ties into the neck when you put it, and the ties are caught in just here. So this is a very tricky thing because you've got to get those ties lined up with the bottom edge of the collar here. So that is another tricky thing. You've also got a neck here that you are clipping into. But as you can see, the instructions are extremely clear. Let me come in a little bit. I can see this from the back, which is great. And you can see how she shows about the lining up. You can see the clarity of where she wants you to put something with that lovely little arrow there. And the there's little symbols that are being used throughout. Look at that there. She's shown you how to snip off those corners so you know exactly which bit you are doing. So although this is aimed at the more experienced sewist, if you want to have a go, I'm not going to say you can't. Just have somebody there to give you a quick hand. So these are now out of place. And here we're going on to attaching the yoke to the bodice. Very clear outlines. And I love, there's an iron symbol in one of these. So you've got very clear diagrams as to how she wants you to test set the bodice onto the bottom pieces so when you've got your collar in and your lovely ties in you then start on the burrito and it is extremely clearly labeled and described the one thing it, it does say is in this first section you are doing the front facing 
then you come down here to 8C and it says here using the burrito method and she's highlighted it roll up the back yoke and that was the one of the things I actually asked could you put that in because I thought it needed to just be a little bit clearer but Peggy does point out there that you might not get your stitching across the back there which is why she's left that little bit open suggesting that you might want to just leave that open you could pull it through and then you just need to catch that down with a little slip stitch everything else in the pattern goes together beautifully let me show you this one here this is the part where you're doing your sleeves and you're attaching your sleeves there and you're attaching them down here now the seam allowances are 1.5 centimeters and depending on your fabric it's a perfect garment to do French seams on in fact on the blouse that I'm wearing I'm using French seams along here and down here and with a click of my fingers as if by magic I'm changed the reason I wanted to change over was because I wanted to talk about these lovely side seams here and how easy it is to put in the sleeve and to do the side seams using a French seam and that is exactly what I've done let me bring the camera up to the work so I have French seams in here and that gives a lovely finish to holding up the sleeves on the outside of the blouse. And you can see here that I've top stitched down the front of the yoke. Now that's not in the pattern. And I haven't top stitched around here. But what you can't see is, and when I was actually at Rachel's earlier, I said, I took the blouse off after she took the photographs and I went, oh my gosh, I've kept my stitching in. Let me just take this out now while you're watching it. Because I find that if I tack like this, there we go. Good job, I haven't tied it up at the back. Can you see how that edge is now holding? This tacking has been in for a good six weeks. I don't understitch. I just roll the hem, iron it, and tack it and hold it in place. I've done the same here as well. Also, I have done French seams from under the arms here. Can you see? Lovely French seam and a lovely French seam all the way down here and this is a blouse where you can finish it off so smoothly that you get no raw edges one of the things with double gauze is it is such a fine delicate fabric being able to finish your side seams with a french seam will allow you to get that absolutely superb inside outside finish so you feel as if you've got something rather unique off the peg of a nice designer boutique Finishing off the sleeves is a very, very straightforward job and you are left here with your simple instructions and your finished pictures here. These instructions here are just about placing your cuff on. Peggy does include in the pattern a piece that will allow you to add some height to your sleeve just here. So if you wanted this sleeve to stick up, she's got a piece here and you put it inside the sleeve, as you can see here. Let me just check that's coming through. Yes inside the sleeve and that will add the height to it. Now just before I finish looking at the pattern there was one thing I wanted to show to you in what Peggy does in these patterns and that is I love the symbols that she uses to help you. You've got here you've got a beautiful pair of snips so you know you're snipping there. The iron now Izzy is using the iron and I did see somewhere a pair of scissors on one of these Oh, where's it gone? Look at that. A pair of scissors. So you know the scissors are there. You are cutting it in those places. And she's even got a picture of the rouleau loop. That was one thing I would advise you. When you're turning the rouleau loops for this top, now you have got a lot of loops to turn because you've got your belt to turn. I haven't put the belt back on. And you've got your loops for the back because it is the most beautiful back tying. Um, can you see? There's a tie at the back. I love the back tie because it, and actually on a hot day, you feel as if you're getting a bit of air into it. So you've got a bit of movement. Now, this top, I wanted to see how good it was for moving. So this is what I did. I couldn't just show you once, could I? I had to show you twice. And I actually sent this picture over to the people at Soho 7 and said, I've tested the pattern out for you. I properly have road tested it. And I got told by the lady in the office that, oh my gosh, we're going to have to up our game for videos now. But there it is. And I felt so comfortable. And that 
was taken on the York Ice Rink just at bef just into the new year, that, that video. And I actually did skate like this, but I'm at a stage in my life where um, I'm getting a little warm. Finally, in the instructions, there's the most amazing comprehensive glossary and she includes as well. I love it when you get a page for your notes. A lovely page to make those notes that you need. How long did it take me to make this particular top? Now, I was pattern testing it, so I wanted to take slightly more time over making it than I would normally. Normally, if I'm doing something that I'm confident with doing, I will just rush, 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 and I know what I'm doing. But this being a pattern test, I literally went through and ticked off every single box so I could enjoy the process of making the garment. And it is a little bit more involved than some makes. I would say you need to, uh, if, you, if you gave yourself a day to make it, say nine o'clock till five o'clock, including cutting out, I think you could have a jolly good go at getting it done in that time. But I enjoy a steadier sew where I can do something and I can just, like with this one, I rolled this hem here. So I was rolling the two pieces together. So it means you, you get your fabric and you, you sort of squeak, roll your fabric in between here and it will bring up the lovely edge. And here you have to push the garment back up and then you can pin it and tack it. And then you can do your top stitching to make certain your top stitching's in the right place. And adding those little features which aren't included in the pattern actually do add to the amount of time you need to use to make it. A very good comprehensive pattern lay is included and I did follow that to the letter because one of the questions that we had to fill in was how the pattern lay had worked and it did work and I did not have a lot of wasted fabric which was really good to know because sometimes you do get a lot of wasted fabric. Would I recommend this pattern? Yes I would. It is an extremely comfortable top to wear. I mean, there's so much room. So I've just picked up this challenge from Instagram and with a new blouse pattern out today, you all need to be heading over to Peggy's website and the link, it's just here, Peggy's website, sohow7.com and you need to get yourselves over to, to Sohow7. You can pick yourself up the PDF pattern for the new regalia blouse with 20% off you can raid your stash for that lovely piece of fabric and you can take part in So April Blouse 23 which is being run jointly by Gabrielle of the Cloth Edit over in, the, in Australia and our lovely Ruan the Yorkshire Sew Girl. You can guess what I'm going to be making, can't you? I'm going to be making another regalia for So April Blouse 23. And who knows, I might take the collar off. And because, it, you know, because you've got a double yoke here, you could take that collar off. Look. You could take the collar off. Couldn't you? It'd look quite good without the collar. You could actually put a little frill on it. You could put a lace there. Couldn't you? A little bit of lace. It's so adaptable. Um, you could actually, if you wanted to, you wouldn't have to need to put these on. You could actually just have the, the sleeves unbanded and you'd have lots of wafting space. So yes, I would most definitely make this blouse again. So how Seven has a patterns that are give you the options to test out your sewing skills and as we're all becoming more and more experienced it's lovely to find patterns that let you do that but remember if you're new to sewing you too can have a go at this. Just put a call out on Instagram and somebody will help you make this top. And if you get stuck and you can't find anybody locally, just ping me an email on the address below in the description box and I'll help you. And then when you finish, don't forget to post your blouses under hashtag regalia blouse on Instagram so that the lovely designer Peggy over at Sohouse 7 herself can see the garment. So you need to tag Sohouse 7 and regalia blouse, hashtag regalia blouse in your posts. I'll put them here. And I will put them in the description box. So, so for now, I'm just going to put in a couple of little pictures that have been sent to me. Look at this. These are the lovely ladies at Soha 7 modelling the regalia blouse. And you can see how different sizes go inside, outside. How lovely to have this. I do hope I've inspired you to make this beautiful new pattern from Soha 7. 
I'm looking forward to seeing all your makes pop up on Instagram. So for now, I'm going to say goodbye. If you like what you've seen, give me a click. One of these. Leave me a little comment. Send me a message if you're stuck on making it. And better still, if you've not subscribed already, would you like to give me a little subscribe? So for now, lots of love and I'll see you soon. Bye!